I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting on watercolor paper. And we're going to use the acrylics as watercolor, which means instead of using regular watercolor paper or watercolor paints, I'm going to be using my acrylics and I'm going to water them down quite a bit in order to make them look like watercolor paints. So instead of just using straight, heavy paint, you can see the paint almost is almost dripping across my palette. And I just keep adding it and you can see it's actually almost running. I clean that brush and I do have paper towels. I'm going to mix some white in with the blue. And I'm going to get that real wet as well. And then I'm just going to start up in the sky area. And I'm going to add water to the sky area. I'm going to do some darker areas up towards the corners. I don't use a lot of the white paint in this. I will lighten some of the colors with it, but basically I'm just using mostly water to lighten my colors. Once I get that in, I can darken some areas. I can take my paper towel, just plain paper towel, and I can actually touch some areas and lift some of the paint off as if they're clouds. When that gets dirty, I just roll my paper. And I'm gonna take a little more water right in here, because I want that. I don't want any hard lines. And you can actually take your paper and almost move it so that the paint runs. I do have the corners sort of taped down watercolor paper will buckle on you a little bit so I do tape the corners down to kind of keep it more flat and you can see where this water is beating up I'm drying my brush real good and just laying it against that color and it kind of sucks up the excess I'm gonna go in actually pick up a little more of the color where I think clouds should be. And I think I like that right there. I'm just going to leave it that. And it looks like a cloudy coming through. And now, while the paper is still wet, I'm just going to run that water across the bottom. I'm going to take a tiny touch of the alizarin crimson. I don't hardly have any paint on the brush. And I'm going to kind of just smear it across, wet my brush, and kind of doing little, almost little circles, bringing it up into the blue. And you can see how it's picking up some of the blue, almost giving it a purple, purple look. And I'm just going to kind of on the bottom, bring that down. Okay. Now I'm going to mix some of my alizarin, some of my blue. And I want almost a purplish blue, more towards the blue side. I'm gonna even touch just a tab of green, not much. And then I'm gonna, I've got paint and it's got plenty of water in it, but I'm just gonna kinda roll. And the paper is pretty wet. I mean, it is very wet and pull that out. And once I get that in, I'm gonna come in and add some higher. I don't want all these hills the same size. And you decide if you want rolling hills like that, or if you want peaks. I'm gonna wash my brush. All I have is water on it. And then I'm kinda pulling that color down. Just kind of bringing it down. 
for the base of the mountain. All right, I think I'm gonna pick up just a tad bit more of that color. I think I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. Maybe something like that. Okay. I'm gonna go into some greens. Same dirty brush, I haven't cleaned it. I mean, I did wash it off before I come back in. And I'm just kind of up and down. I'm not trying to form any real bushes. I just, I want something to break up like that. And then I can kind of take the side of the brush, maybe something. And then I'm gonna kind of pull that across. And you can see it's, it gives you a real water color effect. And we can go in and, and once it dries a little bit and actually um, highlight anything, put anything else in. Right now I'm basically covering the paper, getting rid of the white of the paper. I'm gonna add a touch of blue to that green. I still want it green, I just want a cool green. And I'm pulling my brush through one side than the other, so I got more of a sharp point. It's not gonna be as sharp of a point as you would if you were using straight, heavy acrylics because there's so much water in it, it's, it does flare a little bit. But I'm up here, on the top of that green, I'm just kinda, see how that's a little bit darker, a little bit more blue than the green? down here and I'm just kind of and the paper is still wet it's very very wet it's this is a little thicker paint it's not as as wet as the other one and I'm even going to go across a little bit like this and maybe some of those trees look like they And you can even take a little bit of water on the brush and kind of tap along the base, sort of give it a little foot. Okay, back to my color. It's the greens, a little bit of the blue one, keeping it on the green side. But I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. This one right here, I tapped up here, so I'm gonna give it a little bigger tree. Just kind of back and forth, back and forth. Maybe, maybe another one here. So, back to my colors. And flip my brush over a little bit. And the paper's starting to dry out a little bit, so it's not spreading quite as much, but that's all right. It's still working pretty good. Let me flatten that brush out a little bit before I... And I'm just using the corner of the brush when I go back and forth on these bigger trees. Okay, and then I'm going to tap a little bit of water, just kind of shake the excess water off, and just kind of tap along the base of these. Okay, now I'm going to wash the brush, dry it, just sort of dry it on it, and then I'm going to spread it. I'm going to kind of take here, see if you can see it almost like a fan brush effect. And then I'm gonna to just touch this and tap along the base. I want it to kinda of just kinda of blend in with this and I'm gonna keep tapping down. Like I said, it's still pretty wet. So I'm just sort of bringing that color down. You can see how it's giving it almost like a grassy weed, maybe something growing here. I'm just tapping it down into that wet area. All right, so I've got my sky, I got my hills, and they're kind of fuzzy. Uh, I've got these, I'm gonna tap on the bottom of these, they're a little bit still pretty strong color, so I just kinda wanted, and I you can even come back in and see how I picked up some of the color on it. Stand back, take a look, see if there's any place you need to add a tree. Maybe over here, just a few darker ones over here. All right, so we got our basic background here. 
Now we gotta decide what we want in the foreground. Do we want to carry the grass all the way down? Maybe. Let's get some of that blue from the sky. Maybe. Oh, here. And I'm gonna put just a little blue. Go in, literally washed my brush, and it's just water on it. And I'm gonna take and literally pull that down and then I'm gonna kind of just pick up a little bit of the blue maybe maybe something's coming out a little stream there and then I'm pulling out some of these little edges to define maybe and I like that that looks pretty good I'm gonna dry dry it real good then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna flatten it, flatten it out real good by pulling my hands through and dry it off, flatten it again. I'm just picking up some of that color. And you may have to do it a few times because it's wet, it wants to fill in, but I'm just, trying to lighten some areas through the center where the light sort of hits. All right, and I do have white acrylic paint on here and I can, once this dry, I can, if I wanna add some white waves or highlights or even a little waterfall, whatever, I can do that. But I like that right now. We're gonna leave that at that. I think, now I've only used the one brush. I do have other brushes here. You can, Flatten this brush out, almost like a fan brush, and use it. But I think I'm going to actually go in and find my fan brush and use that. So I've actually got a fan brush, and that just looks just like that it says, a fan. I'm going to wet it, just tap the color on it. Then I'm going to go in and pick up some of that green. Even a touch of yellow with it. And if you look at the brush, let's see if I get a white area. I've got green over here, but you can see where the yellow is. And I'm gonna kind of spread it open. And I'm gonna just tap the water a little bit. I don't want it soaked, I don't want it dripping. And I just tap that. And then you can take this and just along the water edge, kind of touch, pull up, touch, pull up just around the water's edge. Make it look like the grass is growing there. And then I'm gonna go in, dip it in water, pick up some of that green, touch of the yellow, and now I'm just gonna start tapping. And I'm gonna start up here, I think, and bring that down. And occasionally, lift up and then I'm going to add more water kind of drag that a little bit and I'm going to leave some light areas I don't want to lose that grassy along there and you can leave some of the white of the paper that isn't going to hurt it if we don't like it we can always go back in and cover it up but basically um Covering the worst of the white, the most of the white. In fact, I'm gonna go and pick up a little darker, maybe something's here. A shadow coming down. And then kind of just drag that through. Pick up some water. All right, so now I've got my paper basically covered with that and it's pretty wet so i'm going to put this brush down and watercolor the nice thing about watercolor is if the paint dries on your brush you just put it in water it dissolves it it doesn't ruin your brush uh with watercolor paints but this is acrylic we're using so make sure you wash those brushes even when you're using it as watercolor it still will dry and ruin the brush. So remember that. 
if you're using acrylics as watercolor, you still got to follow the rules of acrylic paint. Wash those brushes or put them in water till you're ready to clean them because it will ruin the brush. All right, I'm going to go back to my brush I've been using before. And I'm going to go into some of the greens, touch of the blues, both, both sides of the brush up here. And this is fairly dry. I'm going to touch and start. And you could have used the, um, put a little more water in it. And you could have used some of the, uh, the fan brush. But basically, um, back and forth, back and forth. If you get a bare spot here, you can touch it here like you can still see the trunk. But basically, and I'll do one with a fan brush to show you how to use that. Not everybody does have a fan brush, so it's easier to show you uh, with the different kinds of brushes. So you don't have to run out and say, oh my God, I got to get that fan brush. And I'm bringing that down right here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water on the brush, still dirty, and just kind of pull that out as if there's a shadow under it. All right. This one I'm going to clean because I do want to show you how to do it with a fan brush. So I'm back into the green, touch of the blue, same colors I used back here. And now I've got the fan brush. Touch. Now this time I'm just gonna use the corner. I don't want a tree that wide. I want just the corner of it. And I'm gonna start coming down. If it doesn't come off, tap the water. Just sort of shake the excess water off. And if it's too wet like that, touch your paper or your paper towels and come back and start working. And you can flip back and forth from one side of the brush to the other when you run out of paint. And this, and as you get down to the bottom, you're gonna push harder. See how dark that gets? Touch some water, go back to my color. Load my brush up. I think I'm gonna make that one just a little, little bit higher. And I'm gonna give him another one right here. I'll make that one. I don't want him exact same height. I don't care if this one's the same height, but. I don't want them right next to each other at the same height. And you start working your way down. So you've got one there. And if you want, you can even add a third little one over here. And this is just a small one. Okay. I'm going to kind of wash my brush. Just dry it off. And then down here, I'm gonna kinda, with the wet brush, pull some of that color out. You can even come in with a wet brush and see how I can damp that. And even pick up, if it got too dark in here, I can go in and pick some of it up with a damp brush. But don't overwork it. You get working too much, you're gonna end up with just a big mess there. All right, so we've got some nice trees, a nice mountain. Let's go in. And I've got some blizzard and crimson, some bright red on here. I'm going to just take the fan brush, tap it. And I'm going to open up. Open it up. Maybe just with the kind of corner. Maybe we've got some little florals, flowers growing here. Wash my brush, pick up some of the greens, tap it, open it up, and underneath. And you can go over top of some of them, but I want it to look like that's the greenery under it. So we've got a little bit of red flowers here. Maybe over here. I'm going to go on some yellows. Open that up. Maybe, maybe here where it's darker. I've got a feel of, oh, maybe dandelions or something, some kind of yellow flowers here. 
You can even pick up a touch of the white. And that's the one thing uh, that's nice about when you're using acrylics, you do have the white. And you can even come in and highlight a few of those. I don't want a lot of it, but. Then I'm gonna go back into some of the greens, just like I did over on that side. I'm gonna add some little bit of green. Are you trying to stay mostly underneath? But we got something bright there. Let me go back into my greens, maybe in this corner. I'm gonna pull up some taller grasses along here. Add a little bit of water to that. Back into my greens, get a little bit darker. And see how that's open so that it looks like the grasses are growing there and we can even put some there. Maybe over here, there's a few. And then I can just kind of tap, add a little water to that, and then sort of drag it out. Just clean my brush and drag that down. So we've got different, and I can pull up some grasses there while it's still wet. So we've got some of that. I can go in and I can mix some of my bright red with a touch of my green. That makes a brown, makes a nice brown color. And I can pick up a little bit of the white on one side and it's mixed with the brown. And I can even put a few rocks in here along the shoreline. Here. And I'm just gonna take my little twiggy brush. It's that little one. And on the bottom, I'm just gonna kinda Pull some of that out as if there's some sand or something, pebbles or something underneath. So, little shoreline. And I think over here, oh, let's see. Let's get a little more of the white. I've lost the white. And maybe something bigger. I don't want to do too much with that. I just want to give it a little something I can pull touch of some of the green and pull some color underneath. So we've got a few rocks growing here. Just something for interest. I'm gonna go in with my twiggy. I'm gonna go in to my greens. Maybe, maybe pull up some little taller grasses here. And it just kinda almost a circular motion. And you can see the grass is coming up. And like I said, if you want, you can even take some of the white, just basic white. I don't want to lose the watercolor look, but I mean, if you want a few little highlights, you can come in. You can hardly see them, but I mean, if you get close, you can see a few of the white coming down. But I like it like it is. I'm going to take some of the dark colors, my alizarin, my blues, my greens. Just whatever dark colors you have on there, get it real wet. And I think, I think I'm going to just kind of drag that a little bit. And I'll put a bird flying in and I think I think we're done I think I'm gonna sign that one let me get into my reds get it nice and runny and where's a dry area if it's still wet you want to wait to put your signature on it Otherwise, it'll just run. And I think we have another finished painting. Let me get my mat. 
Yes, I like that. Nice little acrylic painting using acrylics as watercolor. Try it and have fun.